What's going on there guys? Good evening. It is your Earthmaster here on this end of the weekend, Sunday, March 27th, 2022, about 6.06 .06 p.m. California time. Latest quake shows a 3.1 earthquake into the area of New Zealand, it looks like. Seeing a pair of threes kicking up here on the board. Quite a few threes kicking up around the New Zealand area. Let's go ahead and check out the latest map here from the USGS here, showing some activity across the board. Over the last 24 hours, 2.5 and above, and 4.0, sometimes 3.8, or it's smaller, depending on what the USGS wants to do internationally. Uh, looks a little quiet, doesn't it? Look at this. Not a whole lot of movement out here. I mean, for 4.0 and above, western part of the Pacific Ring of Fire looks uh, very quiet for the most part. We did have that uh, earthquake off the coast of Oregon, of course, yesterday. Uh, it has been upgraded to a 5.1 from a 4.6. We have not seen any subsequent movement out here along the west coast. Do want to bring in the all magnitudes here to kind of get a better glance of things. And kind of just adds a few smaller earthquakes out um, pretty much throughout the Pacific Northwest down into uh, the California region. But we're not seeing any type of major movement currently. Uh, a couple hot spots of activity out here around the Tonopah, Nevada area. 13 earthquakes all in the microquake range ranging from about 2.0 below. All across the uh, Candelaria Hills which I just drove through here a few days ago on our way back from Texas. Not a whole lot out there whole lot of desert uh, not a whole lot going on in northern california except for the hydrothermal operations down here with calpine the cobb mountain region creating these earthquakes here from uh well i'm not going to go into specifics but uh yeah quite a bit of hydrothermal operation earthquakes today looking at about 50 earthquakes nothing above the 2.5 range all below that threshold luck, luck, lucky for them uh let's see what else we got here vacaville a little earthquake uh, 1.5 near uh, Green Valley, California, a little, little small microquake, but nothing really significant going on across the eastern part of Sierra Nevada. Some movement down here on the Calaveras Fault Zone and the San Andreas Fault Zone, and a little bit of swarming out here. Uh, looks like uh, on Highway 1, San Simeon, right? Uh, hopefully I pronounced that correctly. That's the one that always pops up and it gives me trouble every time. A couple ones, upper ones kicking off there. It uh, looks like between zero and five kilometers. Uh, Bakersfield, little earthquake down here around the Willer Ridge, 1.6 on the grapevine, 12.1 kilometers, pretty deep movement. And uh, some activity around the Ridgecrest area. But generally speaking, looking at California, aside from this Nevada earthquake activity, things look kind of a little on the mellow side. Not a whole lot going on here along the West Coast and Southern California as well. I think things are really starting to build up somewhere. I just can't put my finger on it where. Um, just looking at this map here, we've seen quite a bit of movement along the Middle America Trench into Costa Rica and southward, including a little swarm of activity down here near Ecuador. Looking at quite a few fives. Got a 5.8 that kicked up uh, earlier. And uh, quite a few uh, fours in there as well into the northern part of the uh, Peru Chile Trench here. Uh, close to the Columbia Trench, it looks like, just off the coast. Um, but yeah, it's kind of kind of hard to say. We're also getting a, quite a bit of back building pressure here throughout the North American plate into the states, the eastern part of the country, uh, with some movement out around Oklahoma City. It looks like 3.3 uh, shaking things up around the Edmond area. Not for sure what's out there. I'm I'm gonna take a guess here though and say that it is a potential. Uh, well, let's zoom in a little bit. It kind of looks like it's right there in the uh, populated region, so can't really call this out as some type of injection well, but uh, 7.1 kilometers. Looks like about the depth that we would expect that to uh, strike in. Uh, let's see the eastern part of the country. Some movement up here around these um, Tennessee area, 2.5, and also down here in South Carolina. 2.1 this area has seen some swarming activity in the past has been relatively quiet at least for recent history but uh, definitely uh, about a month or so ago they did see a pretty pretty good amount of earthquake activity out there in the microquake range uh, Puerto Rico some movement up here around the Puerto Rico trench 
north of Puerto Rico. A couple threes, some of that earthquake activity fairly deep, 113 kilometers over here, uh, just to the northwest side of the Puerto Rico area. Uh, let's see, checking out Hawaii on the big island. 16 earthquakes, that's not that big of a deal. Uh, most of this activity in the microquake range, right? Nothing above 2.5 there on the map. All below that threshold. Things looking pretty calm. I uh, did have one earthquake come in here into the Tonga region. This one's pretty deep. 322 kilometers for a depth of a 4.5 south of the Tonga region into the Tonga Trench. Looking at the last seven days of activity here, most of this movement here has been uh, extremely deep in the area. Uh, so kind of kind of uncertain exactly what this is leading to. I think the deeper earthquake activity though along the Tonga Trench and the Kermadec Trench does heighten up activity up here to the north and also down here into the south into the New Zealand area. That's kind of probably why we're seeing uh, quite a few threes kick up here in the North and South Island area. Let's go ahead and check out the EMSC model. Uh, actually, we'll, do, we'll go to the uh, GeoNet server since we are since we are looking at uh, the uh, New Zealand area. About an hour ago, 3.1 uh, near the Hunterville area, five kilometers east of there, a depth of about 42 kilometers. It's pretty close to the Hikarangi subduction zone. Uh, and also another 3.1 further south. A couple threes from yesterday as well. Let's go ahead and check out the all magnitudes. Uh, looks like there was a 5.2 earthquake. Uh, well, it shows about 13 minutes ago, but I'm uncertain if this uh, event even took place. Let's go ahead and uh, I want to back out of here and check out the EMSC models real quick and see if... Uh, these guys are reporting that 5.2 earthquake in the New Zealand area. I'm not seeing it. Sometimes these earthquakes down here get deleted. That's kind of why they're included in the uh, all magnitudes and deleted events. One thing I'm seeing is those couple threes that were popping up on the earthquake 3D globe. So uncertainty exists when it comes to a potential 5.2 there 13 minutes ago. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Uh, there's that 4.5 EMSC reporting. These guys showing quite a bit of threes up and down the board here across South America and up and down the Middle America Trench around the Philippine Plate as well, south of the Philippines. Uh, quite a few threes kicking up there. Checking out the Middle East. Of course, quite a bit of earthquake activity in the two range, three range as well, but uh, looking at the USGS model, does not show uh, anything significant going on over here in this area of the world. We got one 4.3 in Greece striking earlier this afternoon. Looks like uh, about 10 kilometers or so below the surface. But this area has been relatively quiet here, folks. I've been mentioning it for quite a while when it comes to uh, 4.0 and above. Kind of hard to say exactly. Uh, what uh, areas to watch for the most part. Um, I know we have seen quite a bit of movement here on the western side of the Pacific Plate with lack of activity here up around the China region, northern end of the Java Trench into the middle um, uh, into the middle east area. Uh, might be a little hot spot of uh, potential activity here soon. Uh, Yellowstone map, there's a little bit of activity here tonight. Checking out the Maple Creek area. I'm not for sure why it's doing these little blocks. It's kind of weird. But there is some earthquake activity being recorded here on the seismograph stations there. Yellowstone, Let's see if I can get a little bit better view. I'm not for sure why all these are looking like that. But uh, a couple small microquakes in the area of the northwest corner of Yellowstone National Park here. Some of that activity showing up also in the west boundary in the Purple Mountain region. So it's going to be about a 2.0 or above uh, for those magnitudes. USGS not really showing anything up there for now. Uh, checking out the all magnitudes map. Uh, there's one earthquake way down south here near uh, Hoback, Hoback, Wyoming uh, earlier. But uh, those are not, uh, that's not what's showing up on the Yellowstone seismographs. 
Uh, aside from that, not a whole lot going on. Just a little bit of activity there in the northwest corner of the park. Uh, Earthquakes Canada map. We'll check these guys out. Uh, and some further movement up here on the northern part of the Cascadia. This is from earlier. Haven't seen anything uh, subsequent uh, as far as earthquake activity goes. There was a 2.1 into the Cascadia subduction zone here off the coast of Port Alice, BC at uh, 23.6 kilometers. But uh, overall, no further movement in that region. Uh, checking out the tremor map here along the Cascadia. Look at that. Zero epicenters once again here, folks. I mean, we're coming in uh, into another quiet spell, it looks like. There was a couple days here a week or so ago where we've seen uh, oh, a couple hundred or so trimmers scattered out and about and up and down the Cascadia. But uh, we're entering into that zone again. Very quiet, very quiet activity along the Cascadia subduction zone. Solar weather tonight. We should be kicking into that G1 storm, right? Looks like we are looking into that right now. Getting elevated up around the KP index of 4 over the past couple hours, it looks like. The Aurora uh, oval forecast will probably enhance and amplify a little bit tonight as the evening progresses. Uh, but we are expecting a G1 class storm KP index up around 5 with the higher latitudes seeing a 60% chance of the uh, geomagnetic storming, the auroras, and mid-latitudes at 25% chance uh, dropping off significantly uh, tomorrow and the next day. A uh, little info on AR 2975, which is a pretty uh, interesting development right here. Of course, 2976 is massive, but doesn't have the dynamics as this one here, 2975. Looking pretty, it's growing. But it's also looking uh, its looking crazy. Let me see what these guys are talking about here in the article. Uh, Earth-facing active region 2975 expanded on Sunday in both size and magnetic complexi uh, complex complexity. <laughs> uh, a line between positive and negative polarity also appears to be forming. And this could bode well for the chances of a noteworthy solar flare. Uh, this region will be monitored closely for additional development. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Definitely, I like to see. Uh, I like to see this. I like to see the uh, dynamics here. Look at that. That's kind of uh, looking nice. Like looking like this thing could spark, right? Kind of like a spark when you get when the wind's blowing outside and the air is dry. Rub your uh, uh, feet across the carpet or your shoes, and you touch something metal, and just bam, you get that uh, magnetic energy there. Uh, so yeah, definitely something to note pretty closely. These guys are uh, looking at 55% uh, 55 chance of sea flare with a 10% uh, chance of an M flare. But I'm sure that will be heightened here pretty soon with the uh, ongoing development here of this sunspot. All right, guys, have a good evening. Enjoy the rest of your weekend out there. We will chat to you guys tomorrow sometime. Uh, unless something major happens out here, we'll be back uh, with an update for sure. So make sure you guys uh, subscribe, like, uh, click the notification bell while you're here. We still have a pretty high percentage of people watching these videos that are not subscribed. So make sure you you subscribe, right? Have a good evening, guys. Catch you a little bit later. Peace out.